In every Joestar's young life, they all have this one thing that supported their character and how they were perceived. Unfortunately, young Jotaro Kujo misses this in Stardust Crusaders. So let's go about what that is. One of the biggest things attributed to the work under Araki is that he makes sure to keep you on your toes with your favorite characters. While some villains are comical and you don't feel like your characters are in any danger, there are many villains where you might think that this could be it for your favorite. And, and that's the, that's a thing, okay? Uh, almost everyone is on the table, you know? So don't get too comfortable in JoJo. Oh, oh you, you, you really might get hit. But here's the thing, I said almost, everyone. Almost. Now let's look at what's missing. Jonathan Joestar, injured a couple of times over, healed by others, and died to the main antagonist. Joseph Joestar lost his hand and had accepted his fate as a Joestar when he had defeated cars and he was falling down from the sky and was all like, man, I'm about to explode and, you know, into millions of pieces, but it's all right, okay? I miss you all, goodbye. And, you know, if, if that didn't count, he died against Dio, but was brought back with Dio's blood. Which is, you know, that's, that's its own thing. Uh, the premise of Josuke's stand is that it can restore and heal everyone, but, you know, that's not him. That keeps everyone on edge throughout all of D.I.U. because, who knows, if not dead, maybe he'd be effectively injured. Uh, it's all on the table there. Adding on to that, he had also been blown away by Kira before. It's just that Hayato was there for us all. Then you have Giorno Giovanna. He can heal himself, but with the notorious B.I.G. fight, we got to see what him being out of the picture looks like and how that was an option. It was terrifying, but really, really cool. And Jolene, she can't heal herself, but like Josuke, she takes it down to the line and powers through it and shows how much resolve she really has as a Joestar. It's beautiful. Now, what am I getting at, huh? Well, I'm thinking about the first time that I would watched Stardust Crusaders, and I got up to the Wheel of Fortune fight, and I kid you not, ZZ, the stand user of Wheel of Fortune, says something along the lines of, ha ha, uh, part three is over, and Jotaro, digging out of the ground, says something like, yo, <laughs> dead ass, who's gonna replace me? And I thought that was hilarious. But then that kind of changed up everything for me completely because I realized in this instance, I'm like, oh, wait, 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 wait. This is like a hard main character. This isn't a term that's existed before, but it's something that makes sense to me. Writing fiction, you notice the types of characters that are meant to be fleeting almost like their time in the work may not last forever but their impact will last for as long as time goes but then there are some characters that are just so coded in being an icon and just have received so much positive reception that you just can't get rid of them yet because that's just not on the table yet and it makes sense unfortunately you know, imagine if Pokemon had stopped using Ash Ketchum after the Kanto region. You had so much of this positive reception after the character and all these great moments, so it's not really allowed. You can't get rid of him just yet. Or imagine Darth Vader if he was only in one Star Wars movie. Like, that's just, that'd just be a terrible use of the character, especially considering that Darth Vader is one of those characters that's like, oh wow, there can be lifetimes over and there's still not like another character on par with Darth Vader. That's just a thing that happens. Some characters are just these powerhouses and require a perfect ending for people to be okay with them being gone for now. And that's really the case. It's what you do with good characters. That was the case with, you know, like someone like Walter White, and even Darth Vader too. And that's the case with Stardust Crusaders Jotaro. Shout out to Araki, you know, for putting in that work and giving the, the audience multiple protagonists, you know, throughout all of JoJo. But it's just that, like, while Jotaro grew and became a more human character with stakes and you worry about him and he's all, like, falling off by that time, and so it's like, oh, wow, this is a grown Jotaro. I just never worried about him in part three because I never thought his death was on the table. Now, you may think that that's not the point, but I do think that it is kind of worrisome that you'll have a final fight where uh, you don't think, or well, I don't think, that the main character will either tie or lose, you know? 
I remember when I watched Naruto and Sasuke when I was younger, and it was a gamble on who you'd think would win. Pokemon had tricked me multiple times, making me think that Ash was actually potentially that guy and that he would win. Eventually he did, but that's not the point. Uh, Fate Zero, Death Note, Hunter Hunter, and the other JoJo parts, they all do that. I believe that, oh, hey, look, protagonists can lose, da 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 da, -da. But Dio beating Jotaro in part three, like if you really think about it, was that on the table? To me, nah, not really. That may just be me though. You can comment your thoughts on the most convincing final fights or characters with or without stakes. I like reading these comments sometimes. It's really interesting to get everyone's insight and all that. Thank you all for watching and Godspeed.